Indonesian earthquake toll tops 4,600. Pro-democracy march ahead of June 4th anniversary. And Pope Benedict pays emotional visit to Nazi death camp. Good evening. The death toll from yesterday's massive Indonesian earthquake has jumped to more than 4,600, and that's expected to rise. There are reports about a dozen Chinese nationals were among those killed. Indonesia now has to deal with yet another massive humanitarian effort as thousands of injured people struggle to survive from the country's biggest disaster since the 2004 tsunami. Foreign aid is pouring in, but it's been a struggle to get supplies and rescue teams to disaster zones. Jimmy So reports. A desperate search for survivors. Soldiers dug with their hands, hoping to find anyone still alive. It's simply unsafe to search in many collapsed houses like this one. Well over 4,000 houses were destroyed, with 200,000 people made homeless. Jogjakarta is also home to many protected monuments. The ancient Prambanan Hindu temple, a world heritage site, was damaged while parts of the city's centuries-old royal palaces collapsed. For those who survived the quake, the lack of food, clean water and housing could be devastating for them as they dig through their crumpled homes to search for anything to eat and clothes to wear. More than 20,000 were injured, with 30 to 40 percent of them being children, a UNICEF assessment team member said. Many of the wounded are still only given rudimentary treatments on open fields as foreign medical teams try to come in to help. A Japanese medical team has left for Indonesia. In answering the Indonesian government's appeal for foreign aid, China and Canada have pledged about 2 million U.S. dollars each. The U.S. is promising 2.5 million U.S. dollars. Yesterday's quake was upgraded from 6.2 to 6.3 in magnitude, and so far there have been more than 450 aftershocks. Indonesia sits on the devastating Pacific Ring of Fire, and two more strong earthquakes were recorded in the region today. A 6.2 magnitude tremor hit Papua New Guinea this afternoon, and 10 minutes later, a 6.7 magnitude quake hit the island nation of Tonga. There were no immediate reports of casualties or damage. Jimmy So, TVB News. Chief Executive Donald Zung spoke with Indonesian President Susilo Bambam Yudhoyono this morning. Zung told the Indonesian leader that Hong Kong's aid agencies are ready to help in relief efforts upon request. Meanwhile, a group of Indonesian migrant workers gathered in Victoria Park this morning to remember those who died in yesterday's quake. Emily Chan has details. These Indonesian migrant workers are praying that their loved ones are safe following the earthquake in central Java. About 100 of them gathered in Victoria Park this morning to support one another and to pray for those who perished in the quake. Most couldn't hold back their tears. I'm from the Jakarta, but Jakarta is my family, my friend, and also my family sister in Jakarta. So now we, the heart is, I don't know how to say, very, very sad. Can you contact them? Cannot. Yeah, we call many, many times, but the phone is turned off now. Today's events was organized to raise funds for the quake victims, and they say even though they make meager salaries, they will contribute what they can. A similar event will be held next weekend to raise funds for the Indonesian earthquake victims. Those who may need assistance can contact the Chinese Embassy in Indonesia at 6221-576-1027 or 576-1040. The Immigration Department has also set up a 24-hour hotline at 1868. Emily Chan, TVB News. In other news, the Planning Department has released its latest design on the government's Central Harborfront Reclamation Project. Besides plenty of entertainment areas, the reclaimed harbour front will also have large stretches of greenery and outdoor areas. But today's blueprint does not include details on the construction of the new government headquarters in Tamar. Mike Chung reports. The harbour front stretches from the government's new central government offices at the Tamar site and is separated into four main areas structured upon an 11-hectare waterfront promenade. It's striving to be a green harbour front first and foremost.
That means tree-lined boulevards and a harbor walkway with plenty of open spaces stretching from Central to Wan Chai, as well as a slew of entertainment areas. In addition, an amphitheater and outdoor forums for concerts, an outdoor media show and performance stage, and a cascading timber deck that allows for alfresco dining and a breezy outdoor plaza are all meant to elevate the project into what the government hopes to be a world-class harbor front. It will integrate the current developments in Wan Chai in the uh, uh, central uh, reclamation phase two and also the existing areas to the north of the uh, International Financial Center. This is the prime area of Hong Kong. From here, the planning department says they will undertake more studies to further refine the existing model, which they stress is just one possible design. The planning department says they will be reporting back to the town planning board, which will have the ultimate say on the final design. Mike Chung, TVB News. Town planners say the Central Harborfront blueprint unveiled today should include a detailed plan on how the Tamar site will be used. A harbor activist, meanwhile, called for greater public input into the future of the harbor front. Penny Tang has that story. A harbor protection group says the latest plan for the central harbor front does not allay concerns that it will be destroyed. There are a lot of worries about uh, the uh, development density and also the very big land partial and the idea of a big land scrape, ground scraper um, stretching out um, you know, from the city hall area to the waterfront. Uh, these are all problems that need to be resolved. Lai says the blueprint includes a commercial area and a hotel, both of which limit the public's enjoyment of the waterfront. He called for a fresh public consultation to allow citizens a bigger say in the future of the harbour. One town planner, meanwhile, says the overall allocation of land for open space is acceptable, but he expressed other reservations. We wish to have more uh, detailed planning to show the uh, connectivity uh, connectivities and also the interaction between the, the different land uses, uh, between the, the, the new and the old uh, land uses within the, the, uh, the central area. Chan believes for better coordination, the blueprint should be considered in conjunction with development plans for the Tamar site. Members of LegCo's Public Works Subcommittee will scrutinize the government's request for $5.1 billion in funding for the controversial Tamar site development tomorrow. Aside from the Civic Party, the other major parties have provisionally agreed to support the request. Penny Tang, TVB News. The Hong Kong Alliance held a march this afternoon ahead of the 17th anniversary of the June 4th crackdown in Beijing. The organizers said about 1,100 people took part in the march, while the police put the figure at 600. The turnout is the lowest of all June 4th commemorative marches in the territory so far. As Jay Nan reports, organizers said they are not discouraged by the low turnout and believe more people will attend the candlelight vigil next Sunday. After 17 years, the message is still the same. We dress for June 4th and democracy for China. From Victoria Park, the protesters chanted as they walked through the busy streets of Causeway Bay towards central government offices. It's uh, our responsibility to, to ask the uh, Chinese government to return the power to people. For one mother, the demonstration is also a chance to teach her child about history. China now, you know, certainly is quite different from China 17 years ago. It has improved a lot. But I think for my next generation, democracy is still something that they should understand and try to pursue. But others are not as optimistic. I think it's wonderful that people are so dedicated. But on the other hand, I wonder whether it achieves anything. According to police, demonstration started with only 400 people at Victoria Park, but as we can see, more people have joined in as it made its way towards Central. Organizers say the low turnout is not a sign of apathy, but due to the unstable weather, and they believe more people will be attending the candlelight vigil in Victoria Park on June 4th. Imagine it's 17 years already, and still over 1,000 people come out for the march. And we believe more will come for the candlelight vigil. Very clearly, Hong Kong people are very persistent in supporting democracy in China, and we are real power. 
Lee said 40,000 people attended the vigil last year and he believes the same number will turn out again next Sunday. Jane An, TVB News. The United Nations says more international troops are needed to help restore order in violence-plagued East Timor. Foreign peacekeepers are struggling to contain the unrest as gangs wreaked further havoc on the streets of the capital, Dili. Beijing will send a chartered plane to evacuate Chinese nationals from the country tomorrow. Nearly 200 of them have sought refuge at the Chinese embassy in Dili. Jameson Wong has more on the situation in East Timor today. Another day of mob violence in Dili. Rival gangs roam the streets of the East Timorese capital today, setting fire to more homes and plunging the country into further chaos. Tens of thousands of residents have now been displaced, having fled Dili and seeking refuge in churches, embassies, and at the city's airport. Others prayed for an end to the violence that has gripped their country. Some directed their anger at the government for failing to address grievances in the military that sparked the unrest. I think uh, things could be solved, the problems, if the government start to do it immediately at the beginning, because uh, the problems start to go, to grow up, grow up, and start to become bigger and bigger. International peacekeepers who face the daunting task of restoring order are clearly aware of what their priority is. We will be disarming everybody in Dili. But the situation won't likely improve until that happens. Today, hundreds of United Nations staff were evacuated from East Timor. More than 60 Filipinos also flew out on a Philippine Air Force plane. United Nations envoy Sukahiro Hasegawa said more peacekeepers are needed to put an end to the unrest, while dismissing suggestions that the UN is abandoning East Timor. Jameson Wong, TBB News. Pope Benedict XVI is tonight paying an emotional visit to the Auschwitz-Burkina death camp in Poland. The visit by a German pope to the infamous Nazi concentration camp has major implications on Catholic Jewish ties. It came on the final day of the pontiff's landmark trip to the homeland of his predecessor, John Paul II. Earlier, nearly one million people attended Sunday Mass held by the Pope in Krakow. It took place at the same site where John Paul had held huge gatherings with his compatriots. Back locally, a survey shows more than half of local youths interviewed have committed illegal acts over the past year, and many of them come from relatively affluent backgrounds. More from Penny Tang. The poll commissioned by the middle class advocacy group New Forum interviewed 912 youngsters aged between 11 and 16. It found that over the past year more than half the respondents said they had committed an illegal act. About a third admitted to not paying the full fare on public transport, almost 30 per cent vandalized public property and 9.6 per cent possessed and used illegal substances. Of the lawbreakers, more than a third came from relatively affluent backgrounds, with combined incomes in excess of $20,000 a month. A clinical psychologist says youngsters did this not because they came from deprived backgrounds or lacked financial resources. Instead, Angelis Chan believes they are looking to challenge the status quo and are seeking excitement. New Forum says it's common for both parents to be at work for long hours, but it says parental responsibility lies not just in providing material comforts. This father says it's crucial to set a good example. This father points out that discipline is really important. New Forum says parents should spend quality time with children every night, reading bedtime stories, going through homework with them and talking about their school day. This, it says, would reduce the chances of their children being led astray. Penny Tang, TVB News. In sports, defending world champion Fernando Alonso has captured the Monaco Grand Prix, extending his lead in the Formula One standings. It was Alonso's first win in Monte Carlo. Juan Pablo Montoya took second, while David Coulthard came in the surprise third. Michael Schumacher, who started from the back of the grid, finished fifth. Alonso now leads the standings on 64 points. Schumacher is second with 43. And a look at the weather before we go. Cloudy with occasional rain and a couple of squally thunderstorms. Temperatures will range between 24 and 27 degrees. And that's all from the newsroom for now. Thanks for being with us. Good night.